Um, hello, everyone. Uh, we are here to share Space Escape with you. Uh, this is a science learning game we developed it at Harrisburg University since 2018. I'm Dr. Salio. I teach in interactive media program. Uh, and I have my fellow presenter here, uh, Professor Gray. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Brian Gray. I am a instructor of computer science here at Harrisburg University. Uh, I'm also a PhD student, and I'm working on uh, research into serious games and the uh, cognitive aspects of it, how to use them to teach best, to help students retain the information longer. Uh, so this topic, this project I've been working on for four years is you know, very exciting for me, and I've been very glad to be able to work on it with Dr. Liu and the rest of the team. Yes, exactly. So although we only have two of us here, we do have a big team supporting this project. So since 2018, we were able to get funding to fund the students to work in this project as a designer, developer, researcher, uh, and they can also get their internships throughout this project as well. If you are interested in learning more about our team, you can go to our website, uh, harrisburgu.edu slash space escape. Um, yeah, that's about the team. So the game itself, the game, and we'll talk about the design more in a couple of minutes in the storyline. Uh, the game is designed to teach space science, solar system science to middle schoolers. So we are assuming a baseline understanding of solar system science that a sixth or seventh grader would understand. Uh, but other than that, we are teaching them facts about planets, certain important moons, and the sun through a point and click strategy game. Uh, and the game can be described in a way as come in San Diego in space. You're trying to find the location of someone in the solar system based on clues that they're leaving behind. So uh, the short version of the story, which we'll see uh, through the opening cinematic, is that a little girl is abducted by aliens for a play date, and she is trying to communicate with her father and her dog where she is in the solar system. And so students will point and click on different planets, trying to learn about the solar system, uh, and then eventually have to make deductive reason guesses on where she is. Um, and so the goal is that they'll learn these facts about how the solar system works, the different bodies in the solar system, and, and that will then you know, work as effectively or hopefully more so than the more traditional didactic methods of lecture, of reading, of maybe an educational video. Yes, um, just to, I'll continue Professor Gray's uh, description on the game. So this is our um, most recent um, game design doc or the storyboard. Um, so first of all, you do need a username and password to log in uh, into the game. Uh, after that, you will watch 30 seconds of the intro video to tell you about the story here, and then you will be able to start the uh, game. And when students start the game, they will start to uh, receive different hints from Lucy that are sent from the space. Uh, at the beginning, the hints are very um, vague, and then but it will get more and more detailed and specific. Uh, so that will we hope that can scatter, scaffold students' learning along the process. And students can research different planets by zooming up, uh, zoom on it, and then take a look and see its description and. Uh, it's also helpful for them to take notes on the side as well. Uh, the game design currently is after six hints, uh, the students will be able to uh, decide or guess where Lucy's uh, location is, and they get three tries. Uh, if they were able to identify Lucy's location within these three try, they will be Lucy will be safely returned to home and have a happy hug with the dad. And if not, if students fail to um, find the location after three tries, and uh, we will just, it's a very sad ending. Uh, the students will have, the Lucy will say goodbye to Earth and stay on a space somewhere planets that um, nobody knows. Um, and of course that encourages students to go back to play it again. However, when they play it again, uh, the location of Lucy is randomized. So Lucy, last game, Lucy may be in Mars, but next game, maybe she's on um, Venus. So that's randomized 
um, gameplay there for our students as well. And here is a quick video that we uh, at the beginning of the game that introduced the synopsis of the game. We'll play it here so you can take a look. So, first I want to say, all the art that you're seeing, including that animation, was designed by a student. So this is this is built into the uh, researches that we are tying in with uh, local high school as well as undergraduate students at Harrisburg University in order for them to work on the research. Having said that, uh, how the gameplay and experiment uh, went was this. Uh, students would log in with a semi-random uh, ID that we gave them. So, uh, so that the game would know who they were and be able to track all of their actions. Once they log in, they'd see that opening cinematic, and then they'd be brought to the main game screen where the solar system is laid out in front of them. And all of the different planetary objects, there's about 20 of them, that uh, they could interact with planets, moons, and the sun. Not a planetary object, but we need one global term. Um, they're all on the screen. There are a few simple prompts that say, you know, click on a planet to learn about it, uh, as well as a quick tutorial that can be clicked on that just explains how to play the game and some settings. Right? So the students will start clicking on planets and every time they click on a planet, it will zoom in on the planet, on the art of the planet, it will show the name and it will give a paragraph description. We're probably talking four to six sentences about the planet. And it tells all about the planet or the moon or the sun, you know, uh, geology, atmosphere, gravity, whatever is relevant for that given planetary body. Uh, they can then click out and it will zoom back out to the solar system and they can click another object. After they start clicking uh, enough of these objects, they'll get a clue from Lucy. And as Dr. Lou said in the beginning, they're very vague. It's cold here. I can see a bunch of stars, whatever. Um, eventually, after they click enough of these objects, uh, they will continue to get clues, but they will also have the ability to guess Lucy's location. So they can click on the father and he'll say, you know, where do you think Lucy is? And you'll pick the, the object that you think she's currently on based on all the clues you've been given and everything that you've read on the various uh, planets, moons, and the sun. From there, the game will either say, yes, that's it and display the, the windscreen, or conversely, it'll say, no, try again. And it'll take you back to the solar system. You can immediately guess again. If, you, if your thought process was it's either the moon or Mars, guess the moon and you're wrong. You can immediately go back and guess Mars. Or you can click more planetary bodies and learn more about the solar system. You can go back to old ones, there's no limit to how much you can explore. There is a limit to how many clues you get. Eventually, Lucy will stop giving you clues. Um, and then you have up to three guesses to guess where she is. And at the end, if you don't guess where she is, it, you know there will be a game over screen, including uh, where she actually was. She was on, you know, hey, moon of Jupiter. And whether you win or lose, you are then given the option to play again, or to go back to the main thing. Okay. All of the actions that students take during this playtime are logged based on a session ID and their semi-random identifier that we gave them at the beginning. If they restart the game, they get a new session ID. So we can see, hey, they've restarted the game. The game gets totally reset. They go back to the initial you know, solar system screen with all the planets being marked as having not been visited, and they can play again. And they can play as many times as they want. Now, this is limited by the practicalities of life. And if we go to the next screen, we can see uh, some photos of the experiment when we were actually in a classroom. 
they're in a classroom in a local middle school. And so we were limited by the time we had in class, right? Because they only have an hour of time for science class. Um, but once we went through the instructions and we gave them a minimum amount of time, they had to play through one time, right? And, and that should take about, you know, 10 minutes to do. So they had to play that long. After that, once they played through one time, they could elect to stop playing or keep playing. And they could play as many times as they wanted up to the limit of, hey, class is over. And what we found was, and this is a great thing, that most students played multiple times, whether or not they were successful. And there's other data on that that we'll talk about in a moment, but the fact that we were just encouraging engagement, encouraging exposure, continuing that students were excited to interact with the material, that alone is a valuable commodity. Dr. Liu will talk a little more about what the research and and the uh, statistics and the data that we we generated what we found out of that mm -hmm. yeah continue professor gray's um uh topic on the research here so we have been conducting research using this game for the past couple of years uh we presented in a conference conference and also have a, a general paper published so if you're interested, you can go uh, search for them and it's open access. You should be able to read about it. But the main idea is, uh, or the most exciting or interesting part to us is we group these students, about 228 of them, into two groups, control group and the experimental group. Uh, and uh, same as our hypothesis, experimental group students succeeded the most. They had the highest post scores. Uh, compared to control group. And the important things here is we also noticed um, that we grouped students who in experiential group into succeed or failed in a game. Uh, if they succeed in a game, that means uh, they found Lucy in on, on which planet. If they failed in a game, that means they were not able to locate Lucy's location. So compare these two groups. And the encouraging result shows that even students failed in a game, they were able to have, have a higher post-test score compared to control group, uh, which they had a lower um, pre-test score compared to control group. And they also have a higher improvement in learning compared to control group. So that's the exciting part that we realize, well, maybe this is the evidence that no matter students fail in a game, uh, as long as they are engaging with the content, that means they are learning. Uh, so we, we we think we encourage students to win, to 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 win the whole game. But if they lose in the game, if they were not able to find it, the result is still encouraging. Uh, and we are also conducting another research pro, uh, using this game, but in virtual reality version. So hopefully we get to share that with you in the future soon. Uh, with that being said, that's all, all for our today's uh, showcase. If you're interested to learn more, you can contact us at space, spacegape at harrisburgu.edu. So that E is, you know, both for space and escape, just in between. Uh, and we would love to uh, connect with you. And um, maybe if you have people who want to play this game, let us know as well. Uh, you want to add anything, Professor Gray? No, I just thank you for coming and please do send along any thoughts, questions, ideas that you have. Uh, you know, we're excited to, to answer any questions that you have or explain anything that was unclear or that you wanted further you know, information about. We're happy to help. Yes, thank you everyone and uh, have a good day. Bye bye.